OpenAI launched GPT-5 Codex yesterday, and I tested it on my own project with these three different web dev implementations. I first tried a simple style fix, then a database implementation, and then I implemented a whole feature using a third-party API. As you can see, it took a while, but it was solved. I have plenty of hours in cloud code, so I know quite well what to expect from either cloud Opus 4.1 or cloud Sonnet 4. That's why you'll frequently see me comparing both of them, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to your preference. By the way, I might ruin my intention with this, but I really don't want to waste your time. Long story short, I felt like GPT-5 Codex is better for developers compared to cloud code models, as it seems to provide better solutions in one shot despite being much slower. It also asks for a context instead of going ahead and implementing whatever it thinks the issue is. And as for the Codex CLI, I appreciate the transparency related to the number of tokens spent. I wouldn't migrate from COD code over to Codex just now, as the difference isn't that big and I really enjoy faster implementations. But if today a mid-level developer asked me for a suggestion while starting to use an agentic AI for developing, I'd probably recommend Codex. So starting off with the style fix, this was a pretty easy issue to fix. I just wanted to see how it would fetch for the context inside of my website, as this is what was going on. And I think I have that in production. So I think I managed to reproduce there in this page. Basically, this is what happens. And if I hover on top of this card, it might fix it. Yep. So that's the first thing I asked GPT-5 Codex to fix for me. Feel free to pause the video if you want to see the entire prompt. But this kind of disappointed me since it didn't go inside of my app and just fetch for the context, it waited for me to provide like a full context for it. Because as you can see, it instantly answered me with a bunch of solutions that weren't solutions for my specific project. And this is just one of the reasons why I think it's good for developers because the developers will know how to give it the right context. But vibe coding wise, I wanted to test if it could actually go inside and fetch for that context. And it did so just well. So my prompt was just actually go through my app to see what might be going on specifically for my app. As soon as it started to implement, I noticed these features down here. So the amount of co context I have left for this given conversation and the amount of tokens I also used in this context window, which isn't a thing from GPT-5 Codex. It's just because of the Codex CLI. But yeah, since it's my first time using the Codex CLI, I really, really enjoy that and wish that Cloud Code had that as well. Another reason why I think this is focused on developers is because of this first answer it gave me. The way that it talked about the issue was really objective and really a bit more technical than what I'm used to inside of Cloud Code. And maybe even because of that, it gave me a fast and simple solution. While sometimes in Cloud Code, even for these really simple solutions, it tries to increment and give me a bunch of things that I didn't really ask for. And I mean that especially for styling. Most of the times, while you're trying to style something in the cloud models, I get a bunch of implementations that I really didn't ask for. So what I end up having to do is just specify inside of the cloud.md for it to only implement and focus on the task that it's given. So yeah, for me, this was like a nine out of 10, honestly, uh, just because it didn't immediately go fetch for that context and wait for me to give it the context. This could be good, could be bad, but given how simple this task was, could just really try to fetch for that context and resolve it without a human in the loop. Now, the database implementation was something that I needed for the admin panel. Inside of my app, if you go over to the admin page, go over to models, you'll see that we get a bunch of models listed here. And this add model button right here wasn't here before. So that's what I needed it to implement. But not only that, I also wanted it to add the context window inside of the database for models. As for some reason, I didn't have context window for all of these models. So this involves a lot of fetching for context inside of the schema.prisma, changing the schema.prisma, applying those changes through the yarn prisma db push, and then implementing code inside of my API routes to ensure that I can actually add these models to the database. Oh, and finally, create this model right here, which I didn't even specify for it to be aligned with the entire design of my app, but it seemed to pick up on that and implement it exactly in the same design. So this right here was my prompt. Soon enough, it was done with that. And I really appreciated the way that it organized the code inside of Next.js. I feel like it, its training has a lot more new features from Next.js than the cloud model. As sometimes inside of cloud, I get the page router implementation that I really hate. But yeah, this feature wasn't done yet because I noticed that the model that it created for me had 
a input field where I would have to know the organization ID. But this kind of sucks because every single time I'd have to look up the exact organization ID. And so I asked it to just build a dropdown instead, just like this. So I could just select Google for the organization here. And then for the license, I can do the same thing and select a given license for that model that I'm adding. Now, honestly, this isn't such a hard thing to do. It certainly isn't a seven minutes and it, the seven minutes was when I screenshotted this. This actually took like nine minutes and a half to implement everything. And I'm pretty sure that Claude would implement this in around like three minutes or so. But eventually, without any further prompts, it managed to implement exactly what you see here. A pretty solid list with all of the organizations. So just because of the time it took to implement this, I'd give it an eight out of ten. In Cloud Code, I think I would be able to implement this faster, but I'm not sure if it would get everything in a single shot. Now, I was lazy enough to not want to type in every single details about a given model. So for example, the GPT-5 codecs that we're talking about, I wanted this exact feature. So I could click on fetch with Firecrawl. This would go on and use the search feature from Firecrawl, find websites that has GPT-5 codecs, and soon enough, I could click on verify and insert. It should verify and check if the extract process from Firecrawl is done and then fill all of the input fields with the data for that given model. It's been a while. Let me click on verify and insert. Okay. It seems like the description was inserted. So yeah, this is the feature that I wanted it to implement. And as you can see, it clearly did implement that just fine. And here's where I really appreciated how it asked for context to build what I wanted it to build because initially I wanted it to be an AI agent that would execute Firecrawl's MCP. And honestly, my prompt was pretty bad because I didn't know that you had to give Codex CLI permission to browse the internet inside of the ChatGPT interface. But eventually I gave it the right context. I went over to Firecrawl, copied everything about the Firecrawl MCP and posted it in here. What I really liked about this model is that it didn't start chit-chatting with me saying that, hey, your implementation, I mean, thank you for giving me the context or anything. It just went straight to working on the task. At this point inside of Cloud Code, I am 100% sure that it wouldn't tell me this. It wouldn't tell me about the difficulty of implementing what I wanted to be implemented. It would just try to implement whatever it thought it would be sufficient, even if it had to use mock data to do so. But GPT-5 Codex didn't do that. It just told me about the issues and went on asking me for either more context or just having me choose which direction to go. And here's where I'd start to get worried inside of Cloud Code because of the context window. So till this point, I had already sent in a huge context about the MCP and I didn't even want to use MCP anymore. So at this point, you'll see that I say, let's do this differently. Instead of creating an AI agent or even using Firecrawl's MCP, let's use just two endpoints they have. So search and extract. And then I gave it the full context for search and extract. But if I did not know that I still had 71% context left, I would have probably opened a new context window as I'd probably worry that it still has to implement everything. And so a lot of context will be needed. So now it started to create everything and something that GPT-5 Codex always does is note some next steps. And these steps are something that you need to do to ensure that the implementation simply worked. So at this point, it added the button. You could fetch for the data. But after it fetched for it, nothing inside of the input fields was being populated. So I went over to Firecrawl's dashboard to see what was going on. And it seems like it was actually using the search feature, but really not doing anything else with that. So I specify that inside of this prompt while also asking it to create some logs, which it did pretty fine. And while testing it again, this is the log that I got, which got me to understand what was the problem. But this problem is solved by simply reading the Firecrawl documentation, of which I did send it before. And I know that Cloud Code would have probably implemented this pretty fine, as I have implemented a lot of different things using Firecrawl and the Firecrawl's extract feature that has the dynamic of first answering the server that it started the extract feature, giving you an ID. And then you use that ID to fetch for Firecrawl server to see if that extract process is done. So the way that I know GPT-5 Codex implemented this was you're basically sending over a request. And then as soon as you get the request back saying that it's okay, you use that data as if that were the scraped data. When in reality, Firecrawl is just informing you that the extract process started. So I followed along with this prompt right here, which got it to implement something that would 
test that endpoint until it finished processing. As you can see right here, it attempted 11 times, then 12, and then it just failed because we would just get a timeout. So instead of just asking it to raise the number of attempts, I preferred to have that button that you saw right here. So verify and insert. This way, I'm the one fetching to see if the status of the extract feature is complete. And so it did implement this just fine. The only problem is that it took 15 minutes. I don't think anything inside of Cloud Code ever took me 15 minutes. But despite this, my feeling is that whenever GPT-5 Codex has the right context, it will almost certainly implement the feature correctly. And I really did not notice it creating any mock-up data, nor implementing random features that I didn't ask it to build. So despite everything, here I'd give it a 9 out of 10, just because honestly my prompting was kind of off for this test. And the way that it guided me to search for the right context and implement a feature that made sense with what I'm building was pretty awesome. Well, that is it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.